Uh, yes, Counselor, would you ask me the question again, please? <laughs> <laughs> when you said nobody, um, nobody does this, um, did you mean nobody makes such calls? Yes, and the calls that the learned counselor from Leicester is referring to are many accounting firms, many law firms have administrators that are in charge of placing retired partners on board positions with the idea that their retired partner would shift business towards their old firm that's paying them a fucking pension. But nobody makes the fucking calls. Nobody calls human resources and or the retired partner administrator. Nobody. When I mean nobody, I mean not one motherfucker swinging dick on the planet of Earth, 7.36 billion people makes that call. Except me. In 46 years. And my minions. So you ask yourself, why? What the fuck? Why wouldn't they make the calls, oh learned counselor? That's the question. <laughs> I'm asking you, what's the answer? <clears throat> Why do you think they don't make the calls to build their dream team? They've never made such calls before? They yeah. Are, now, do you think it's stupidity? They are not hungry enough to build their team or they're too... too or they're too, too fucking too lazy? lazy? Yes. They're too afraid? Now what can a little HR cunt on the phone, how can that make you afraid? Have you ever seen anybody in human resources? Hello? Hello? Human resources, PwC? Give me a fucking break. They're lazy, stupid, and incompetent. That's why they don't make the fucking calls. And their desire is not deep enough. Now, I can't be the only guy on this fucking planet that's ever thought of them. Today, I am, because I've never bumped into one single person that makes those calls. And all these dipshits on YouTube aren't going to make the fucking calls. I guarantee it. So I'm not letting a secret out. Because I've been saying this for 40 fucking years. I've yet to find one human resource person in a major accounting firm or a major law firm that has ever field at such a call, ever. I've asked managing partners of the big four accounting firms and the, all the big international law firms, has anybody ever called you looking for a retired partner? Huh? Why? <laughs> so maybe I am the smartest motherfucker that ever walked. Or I'm one of the hungriest. Because I'm not one of the smartest. No, that's a lie. I am one of the smartest. <laughs> I, I, I would be disingenuous if I didn't say I was one of the fucking smartest. Because I am. There's no question about that. But that coupled with hunger. Were you poor when you grew up? Grew up? No. You went off to fancy school in America? Okay. I was poor when I grew up. See, the problem with you guys, you had too much money. I certainly didn't fall into that category. So I'm ingenious. I came up with a system to take no fucking money, zero. Scratch, as they say, not scratch and golf, but scratch and build wealth. I'm still waiting for some asshole in personal development or success to come up with a similar system. But I think after 21 years, it ain't going to happen. It, like, I, like we were saying earlier, it's not the board of directors that's hard. It's not the success fee that's hard. It's not getting the money that's hard. The difficult thing to join the dots are finding the right deals. That hasn't changed in a thousand years. Finding the deals. And we give you a template for morons. A template for morons. Mongoloid, idiot, imbeciles to follow. Any fucking person watching this on YouTube can follow it. But will they follow it? No. Why they watch me on YouTube is beyond my comprehension. 
Why don't you watch uh, Looney Tunes or something? <laughs> it's so simple, even you, and that's way down on the bottom of the barrel, as well educated as you are, can do this. When you get those partners from those firms, do you end up going to those firms for the business? or? Well, it depends. And then once the retired partner comes, you interview a few. You don't just take the first fucking guy that fell off the pumpkin truck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you interview a few. You find one that you have some chemistry with, you know, that you get along with, that wants to play a little golf, you know, etc. We don't want any, uh, you know, 25 handicappers. You want some guys four or five handicaps you can have a decent time with. <clears throat> and then, and he may not tell you. He may tell you. Well, in Cincinnati or wherever, no, my, my firm isn't the firm we ought to go to. E and Y. That, I've seen that happen. You know, a former PwC partner said, let's go and do it at E and Y. Because he's going to have more clout at E and Y mm -hmm. than he would if he went to his own firm that he retired from. And then that opens up all Pandora's box. Oh, you got Joe Jones, a former managing partner of PwC from Cincinnati. He's on your board. We try to get him for 25 years. He'd never leave the firm. And then somebody calls you on New Year's Eve to sell you a company that uh, like it happened to me. And once, once it gets rolling, like I told you, I never did cocaine, but I mean the adrenaline rush, I mean it's unbelievable. Deal flow is better than sex, multiple orgasms. The only, I mean it's even better than taking the cash out of the company, because once you make the deals, you know the cash is coming. <laughs> So is the main point of that specific Dream Team member to for deal flow, not just... No, no. They're all for deal flow. But, I mean, senior partners of accounting firms and corporate finance partners of law firms are golden. They just see a lot of stuff. They know people. And they know people. You can't be a partner for 25 years in one of those big firms and not know a gazillion people. Yeah. One question, please. We're calling the, <laughs> the partners, the accounting firms or the law firms looking for retired partners. Is it better to hire them for the position of CFO and lawyers or we can find among them for chairmen? Or better to find... Or you can find them for chairmen or just board directors. Okay. Now remember, you bring on PwC former partner on your board, not when he's active, he's retired. They're, they're either going to want the corporate finance work, because that's where the real money is, because that's the deal for you. <clears throat> and, but you're probably going to give them the tax work or the audit work. They can't do all. I mean, they've been separated now. And uh, what, you, what you want is you just want a retired partner. I mean, corporate finance I like better, but tax partners know a lot of people too. Don't, you know, you wouldn't know a tax partner from a corporate finance partner of a bitch in the dick. So don't get all of a sudden so, you know, choosy. I mean, guys, it works. I mean, just, you know, it flat fucking does. And the, uh, you think after, you know, you think after 21 years and 50 billion plus from idiots that you can figure this out. But I get the same question. You've been through it a lot of times. I get the same fucking questions every fucking seminar. Because they sit at looking at me, uh, mm. and that's why I say a jellyfish has got more fucking brains than you do, and a jellyfish has no brains. I guess you have to add a slide called Q and A, but all the questions and yeah, yeah. answers from the beginning. I can hire a jellyfish, I can train a jellyfish <laughs> to do this shit. I might even be able to, you know, a, a Muslim lawyer like you, maybe. I'm not, I question that, I'm not sure I could do that. I'm not sure I could do that. The jellyfish has a lot of time. I don't have 600. Oh, God. <laughs> please, please. They're going to give you a fucking stroke. Now, jellyfish have been around 600 million years. That's correct. You remember, it's one thing out of one fucking slide. <laughs> give them a fucking prize. Give them a fucking prize. Holy shit. Unbelievable. Okay, any more questions about what you give to the board members? Don't ask me. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> don't fucking ask me. I mean... You know, it's a good thing I don't have a bad heart, you know? I fall over dead, you know, from a bad heart. 
And uh, you know, this is like this is like Laurel and Hardy. These two, you know, you, you know who Laurel and Hardy is? Are they're English comedians from the 1930s? Do you know who they are? Yeah, very popular. Oh yes, actually they are very popular. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're very popular, you dipshit. But you two are like Laurel and Hardy, and you're both Muslim. Yes. I know you don't tell me yes like you're I know you are. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When you want to say Jesus Christ and you want to say, uh, is it, can you say, how would you say that using Allah? How, how do you say, oh my God. Oh my God? Okay. Well, I mean, that, that, that doesn't sound very uh, Muslim to me. Oh my God. Praise God. What's that thing they say? Uh, oh, praise God. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh God. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute. Asking is the key. Yeah, okay, we know that. Not everyone will want to take the risk unless properly sold. We know that. Especially in the US. Um, okay, that's uh, that's enough. Okay, any questions? Who am I seeing tonight in private time? Me. Okay, you guys, okay? They did a very good presentation. Um, Alexander was uh, pretty vanilla. That's good. And sometimes you will find a bank, a financial institution, that will just like you for whatever reason, likes the dream team, recognizes the names. I'm going to give you a real uh, uh, unrealistic... Uh, uh, example, you know, if Steve Jobs is still alive and he's on there, or just, I mean, uh, you don't have to worry. So, but all those guys are got, got too many board positions; they're not going to be doing it. But all these guys up there have built dream teams with significant people, and uh, and the job is not easy, and not only, but it is significantly easier. Uh, and uh, they, you know, and you will be. Pleasantly surprised, just like the emails from the, the mentees that I've written that I've gotten in the last 10 days from guys. I don't know how why it works so well, but it works. I know you get tired of hearing it, Dan. I don't understand why it works. I don't really give a shit if you understand why it works. I really don't. I, uh, it works. It's like I see Howard Shenson's picture back there. He's right next to uh, Bear Bryant. Howard Shenson is the father, arguably the father of modern management consulting. Howard Jensen was my college professor in university. He was the associate dean. Um, Dick Rabin, I think of Dr. Rabin's name earlier. He was the dean of the School of Business. Jensen was a PhD candidate, and he was working on his PhD. He was associate dean. And I was a graduate student. I used to teach the classes for these guys. And when I used to get term papers, I used to weigh them. The term paper, if it weighed an ounce, you got 100. If it weighed the three quarters of an ounce, you got 75. I was grading 3,600 papers. There's no fucking way that I was reading 3,600 papers, okay? And because the professors weren't reading 3,600, so they gave him the graduate assistant, me. Anyway, so Howard Shenson was telling me, did you read those papers, Dan? I said, no, Professor Shenson, you know, I'd be lying to you. Uh, and he said, well, why'd I give them to you? You know, I could have weighed them. <laughs> and I said, because I, at that time, I think I was getting paid $5 an hour. Because I'm getting paid $5 an hour, and better that I waste my time weighing them than you weighing them. Uh, and, uh, he, and he said that uh, we used to argue about things. He was only two years or three years older than I was. And uh, I said, if you were so fucking smart, you wouldn't be finishing your PhD. You know, he says, because he had this idea, not dissimilar. Fred Smith had an idea about Federal Express. He wrote the paper uh, for uh, uh, Federal Express. He got a C in it at Yale or Princeton or wherever he went to school. And Howard Shenson had an idea about management consulting, which wasn't in existence in those days, in the early 70s. And I said, if you're so fucking smart, why don't you go out and prove up an industry? Forget that PhD you're going to get. To make a long story short, he left four or five months later at the end of the semester, and he went out and was the father. Howard Shenson, you can Google fucking, Howard Shenson was the father of management consulting. He got super rich, wrote a lot of books, etc. And about a year before he died, he contacted me, and he said, I want to take you to lunch. So he took me to lunch, and you could tell he was already, I guess he had cancer. Uh, I'm not sure he had cancer, but he wasn't well. And he said, I just wanted to thank you. He says, because you stuck your foot up my ass, uh, I went out, and you know they say I'm the father of an industry. 
That's what I do. That's what I do. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do for you guys. Thanks, good night, and we'll see you two guys in a few minutes.